Hello everybody! Today I decided to do something a bit different than the usual model videos and I decided to record a little Photoshop tutorial for you. Um, over the years I've been getting a lot of questions about how I work, um, what's my process in Photoshop, how do I retouch skin, etc, etc. And I just thought it would be interesting um, to kind of show you guys how I actually work on images um, from start to finish, so from Lightroom export to Photoshop and back to Lightroom and so on. Okay, so right before we begin, I just wanted to say that please bear in mind that everything I do in Photoshop I learned myself, either through hard, long hours of retouching images I took for the last four or five years, or you know, through watching my husband, um, but it's been a really, really long process and everything I learned, I never learned proper academic or book way or whichever way you want to call it. So I realized that some of my techniques might not be the most correct, they might not be the fastest, but this is just the way I learned it, as I said, on my own mistakes basically. And I just want to share it with you guys and hopefully it's going to help some of you um, with your image retouching. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and let's get right into it. Okay, so before I even start working on my images, I always import them into Lightroom first. Um, I select my favorites and then once I have the favorites selected, I do my basic adjustments. Usually it's the color toning, just because it's much easier in Lightroom than it is in Photoshop. It's just one click of an eyedropper. Um, so it's super simple as you can see. Um, I also work on exposure if I think the image is too dark. I might adjust the clarity and sharpness if I feel that the image needs a little bit of a kick. Next on, um, I will just move on and export the image to Photoshop and start working on them. Okay, so once we have the image imported into Photoshop, um, I always start with the skin. Um, I think it's the most important part of the image for me, so I always work on the spots and any imperfections first. Um, I tend to use a patch tool. I know lots of people use healing brush or stamp tool, but I just find it easier to use the patch tool. It's stuck with me. Um, I find it the most comfortable to work with. But of course, if you prefer a healing brush or a stamp tool, it's totally up to you. It's totally preferential. Um, this is just the way I like to work. What I do with the patch tool is I select the area that I want corrected and I drag the patch over an area that has a good piece of skin. This way it replaces the bad skin with the good skin. I took this particular image as a part of an editorial that was published in Irish Times. Um, it was shot in the studio, um, we used snow machine, hence the, the snowflakes in front of her. It's not a Photoshop effect, it's, it's an actual snow machine. Um, as you see, I was quite lucky because my model has beautiful skin, um, the makeup was absolutely flawless, so it does cut my work a lot. Okay, next on we're moving to dodging and burning. This is my favorite way to retouch skin. I just think it's very clean. Um, it's definitely my favorite way. Um, as you see, I have dodging and burning saved in actions. It's just a quicker way for me to do it, so I don't have to recreate it step by step. But of course, I will show you guys how to do it properly. Okay, so first you have to create a clipping mask by pressing Alt plus New Layer in the right corner of the screen. And when you create a clipping mask, you have to select the mode to soft light and you have to select the little box that says fill with 50% grey. Next thing you do, you press Alt plus um, Adjustments layer and you select the black and white layer. Finally, create a curves layer by pressing Alt plus Adjustments and selecting Curve. Um, and create a curve that is similar to the one on the screen. So it's a curve downwards with two little points at the, each end of the curve. So I'll just go ahead and start dodging and burning. Um, I'll probably start with the highlights, um, just because I prefer it this way. And then I will move on to shadows um, if I want to deepen a shadow or fix an eyeliner or anything like that. So remember to put your opacity on 100 and flow on around one or two. It has to be very, very subtle. Um, this brush is very strong, so you do want to be very, very careful with it, unless you have a very light hand, but in general, I recommend to use a really, really low flow. As an interesting fact, this image took me 53 minutes overall to retouch. Um, 
I wouldn't say it's super long, I would say it's quite a standard time, if not quite short. Um, it can take up to three hours or even more to retouch an image depending on the amount of detail. As you see here, we do have a good amount of detail because it is a close-up shot, so um, I think it's quite a good time. So once I have all the highlights done, I will go over little details like the eyeliner, the eyebrows, if I feel there's something I need to fill in, uh, I'm going to fix small little things that annoy me. Another thing that I forgot to do at the beginning of the video, and I think it's because I was really nervous and I just forgot, uh, was to create a background layer. Um, it's definitely a must. Um, working on a background layer sa saves you a lot of hassle if you do something that you're not happy with because you can just switch off the layer or delete it. Um, so I definitely, definitely um, should have created one. But as I said, I forgot. I created it a bit later on, um, which was definitely a mistake. Um, but it's better now than never, so... Okay, next thing I'm going to be moving on is liquify. Um, I would like to fix two little minor things. Um, I do want to adjust the shape of um, Laura's eye because I think it's just a tiny bit smaller than the other one and it bothers me. And the other thing is I would like to adjust the lip shape a tiny bit because it seems to be leaning up to one side. So I just want to even it out a bit. Also another thing I want to do is just to add the little light reflection in the other eye because I think it looks kind of funny when one eye has it and the other doesn't and as you see it does make quite a difference. Um, I use the stamp tool to just copy the light from one eye and then apply it to the other. I also decided to deepen up the color of the makeup. I think it just complements Laura's skin and um, it gives this nice warm feeling to the face and it just adds a bit of dimension. Another thing I like to do is to just uh, grab the eyedropper to sample the color of the skin, um, have the flow still at a very low, between 1 and 5%, and then go over the skin to kind of even the skin tones even further and just smooth the skin ever so slightly. Um, be careful not to overdo it because it's easy and then it's going to look blurred and that's the last thing you want to do. Blur is not your friend. I also decided to go ahead and remove some of the hairs that are sticking out from the wig. Um, funny enough, it's a pretty cheap synthetic wig, but it looks absolutely fantastic, so I was delighted with it. I wanted to remove the hair using the stamp tool, but as you see, it's not really working out, so I came back to my good old patch tool, and I just went this way. After that's done, I'm just going to use Dodge and Burn to go over the fingers. They are a bit um, red, so I want to soften that. Uh, I'm just going to make them a bit brighter and just in general match the skin tone as you can see in the little before and after. Um, it's very important to check on your work also because sometimes you can go too far or you over Photoshop or you just get too focused on one detail. So I think it's important for you to click and check as you go because if you go too far you can always reverse it but if you go too far without checking and then you decide you want to change something you might be in trouble. After I'm done with um, all the skin editing I'm going to remove the black and white and the curves layer because I'm not going to be using them anymore anyway and they are just in the way so I just delete them and move on to general image adjustment. Next on I'm going to create three curve layers. The first curve layer is going to be a simple um, highlight and shadows adjustment. 
Secondly, I'm going to be working on the brightness curve. Um, this is just for the model brightness, um, but I will elaborate on that in a second. Finally, the third layer, it's going to be a background color layer. Um, I think the background, the mid gray is a bit too light, so I'm going to just darken it. Now I'm going to create a mask on the background layer and start filling it with a brush. I create a mask that is black and then I work with white brush to fill in the places that I want darker. I usually select the parts of the image that I want darker, but because the image has loads of soft lines, because I shot it on quite a low F, I don't think it's necessary. I can just freehand fill in the color um, and just go a bit more carefully over the sharp edges like the neck. Because I forgot about the earmuffs, I'm going to go back to Dodge and Burn and I'm going to add some highlights and shadows so it creates a bit of more dimension. Now I'm going to be working on the middle curve, the brightest one. Um, basically what I want to brighten is the model itself. I want the background to stay dark. So I create another mask and I go in freehand with the white brush again and I fill it in where I want it highlighted. So basically just the whole body of the model. Next I'm going to create another um, curve. This time it's a contrast curve. I'm just going to adjust the contrast ever so slightly. Um, I don't want to do it too much because it tends to ruin the quality of the image. Once I have that done, I'm going to create a hue and saturation layer um, just because contrast curves can give you a slightly orange tint to the skin that can make it look a bit intense. Um, so I bring it down to 10, create another mask again and just fill in the places that I want to be desaturated. So most of the skin, I skip the eyes and I skip the lips because I would like them to be a bit more intense and to stand out a bit more. Sometimes if you decide something is too much, you can just bring down the opacity of the layer so it's a little bit less intense. Moving on, I created an exposure layer. Um, I do it to get the slightly faded um, black. As you see, once you have the exposure, um, everything looks a bit more creamy and a bit more to put together. I don't know how to explain it, but I just really like the way it looks. It's time to work on the hands again. I just used a brush with a skin tone on it. Um, to just lighten it even a tiny bit more and match it a bit more to the rest of the skin. Also using stamp tool, I just cleaned the edges of the nails a tiny bit. Again, going back to Dodge and Burn, I am going to put some more highlights into some of the snowflakes, the ones that I want to stand out a bit more, um, and just a general kind of last minute skin or makeup corrections that I see. I'm also going to put a bit more highlights into the jumper so it looks a bit more white. Now I'm going to go ahead and create yet another hue and saturation layer. This time I want to bring the saturation up on the eyes and on the lips and maybe a tiny bit on the cheeks just to make them stand out a bit more. Now I'm going to move on to color correction. Um, to be honest, I'm quite happy with how the image looks. I'm quite happy with the skin tones, but I do like a slightly bit more blue in my black. I also think I might adjust the highlights a bit to be a bit colder. As you see, the cold tone gives it a bit more of a wintry feeling. Finally, I'm moving on to sharpening. I'm using the option of Smart Sharpen under the filter. Um, I obviously make sure that it's not over sharpened, but I think this just works. After I crop the image, I just want to deepen some of the shadows on the sweater a bit so you can see the arm a bit better. Um, and after that, I am ready to save.
and now we're ready to save. Okay, so the image was taken back to Lightroom. So here you have it, a before and after. Um, as you see, it's not really drastic. There is quite a bit of change in terms of um, highlights and shadows. But other than that, as I mentioned before, the model had a pretty good skin. The makeup was great to start with. So again, great team does make a difference. And if you start strong with the right lighting, the right team, you know, the right makeup, right model, um, then it makes your job in Photoshop much, much easier. Photoshop is a lot of work and it can be really, really hard at the beginning. But try your best to make the images as nice as you can and it will work out eventually, I promise. Hope you liked this tutorial and if you did, I would love if you gave it a thumbs up and if you subscribe to my channel. And I am looking for any suggestions of anything that you would like to see in the future. So would you like me to cover more skin retouching, color balancing, etc. Hope you have a nice day. Bye bye.